Hey everyone, and welcome to the Grow Hemp series. Today, we'll be growing some masculinized seeds. These aren't actually masculinized seeds, but they're the closest thing I've seen to it because these are the seeds that were made from a male hermaphrodite plant which pollinated itself. And here I'm just going to be growing five of them to see if they truly are masculinized or not, and if not, what the results turn out to be. I'm starting with a paper towel method, and once they've all popped, I'm growing all of them in one large fabric pot with the cheapest potting soil I could find. I'm using the cheapest potting soil since this is purely a test grow and with nine months of built-in synthetic fertilizers, at least I probably don't need to worry about giving the plants anything but water for the entire grow. Right away, one of the five sort of withered and died, so we're down to four. And I'm growing this outdoors, not because I want to do a large full-term grow, but the exact opposite, since this is in the middle of the fall months, so the plant should flower right away, revealing its sex. The only issue I might have is that the outdoor weather is getting colder and colder, which would stunt the plant's growth or even damage the plants. So if it does get too cold, I can always just move it indoors as well. Luckily, we're getting a streak of warm weather, and it's giving the plants a boost of vegetative growth, although the plant on the very right is still struggling and I'm not sure why. And if you missed how these seeds were made, I had a male hemp plant that I gave ethylene to, which is a plant hormone that stimulates female flower growth. And this caused the male plant to not only grow pollen sacs, but also female buds. It eventually then pollinated itself which produced these seeds. And I'll have a link in the description if you're interested in seeing the entire process. But yeah, we can fast forward this a bit since there's not much to note here early on in the grow. The three larger plants have started to show their sex, and all three of them are females. So now we know that making hemp seeds with a male hemp plant that pollinated itself can actually produce viable normal seeds. Not extremely important given that I can't really think of an instance where this information would be useful, but it's still super interesting. The fourth plant is still not showing any signs of female flowers or male pollen sacs. And now that the temperatures outside are rapidly dropping, I'm going to be moving the plant inside for the remainder of the grow. And a word of advice. If you ever wonder if it's worth it to move an outdoor plant indoors, it's not. Seriously, 
I haven't done this in a while, so I forgot about all the problems that could come up because of it, but I should have just risked keeping it outdoors. Because even with the check around the plant for any signs of bug activity before moving it in, they can still be hidden somewhere you might have missed, or even in the soil. And in my case, both happened. As I started to notice white flies a couple of days after bringing the plant inside. And by then, I had to go into damage control, looking at each lower leaf for new eggs and setting up sticky traps. Luckily, I did set up the sticky traps because fungus gnats started to appear soon after. And these are impossible to check for since these pests initially develop in the soil and only appear above ground after a couple of weeks of feeding on your plant roots once they develop their wings. So the sticky traps had to pull double duty in controlling both pests. Also, the fourth plant has finally showed its sex, which is a male, so I have to remove it from the grow space before the pollen sacs fully develop. I'm avoiding using insecticides because I do want to send these plants in for testing. So I kept looking for and removing any of the lower leaves anytime I found white fly eggs on it. And I also watered the plant a lot less to discourage the fungus gnats from laying new eggs. And between these simple tactics, along with sticky traps, it was enough so that there was never a full-blown infestation of either of these pests. I'm going to harvest the plant early since with the built-in synthetic nutrients in the soil, the buds are never going to develop that well with all the excess nitrogen. And you can already see from the humongous sugar leaves on this plant that this is only going to get worse. I'm also sort of sick of having to deal with the small bugs indoors. And you can see just by placing a sticky trap on the floor, it's able to catch some fun snats flying away. And this is just a test grow after all, with the only real goals of having the plant grow large enough to determine the sex and also to send the samples in for testing, just to confirm if the THC and CBD content is on par with its strain, given the unique source of where the seeds came from. And after receiving the test results, these definitely can be considered normal seeds. For harvest, I'm just trimming the large fan leaves and nothing else before cutting down each of the three plants. And that's it. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch. Available at Amazon in print and digital with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.